Hey guys, so today is finally the day AMD is going to be announcing RDNA 3, their 7900 XT. That's going to happen at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So that's going to be very exciting today. We're going to talk about some predictions and why this is important. And yes, I do have a little bit of a cold. My voice is a little bit different. I know people commented the last video, but it makes with some like pretty cool effects, I guess. This summer, AMD will crush NVIDIA. All right, so there's been actually like very few leaks on the actual 7900 XT. Over here, I'm holding the 6900 XT, which is the predecessor, and there's a lot to like about this GPU, namely the performance and the price that it came in at compared to the 3090. Now, the 7900 XT and the XTX, we believe there's two coming. There haven't been that many leaks yet with performance, with you know different details, aside from a couple of things that we can glean from from some information. The primary reason for this is that it's still kind of early. I don't think these GPUs have been given over to the board partners to be validated. That's when we can expect to have more information on these GPUs. Now, of course, after the announcement today, we can assume that within the next few weeks, board partners will get these GPUs. They'll start to validate them. That's when we're going to start to get some of the real performance leaks. And then eventually, with the reviews coming out, as this GPU slated to come out probably the first week of December or so. And of course, AMD should let us know some of the rough performance metrics during the presentation later today. But that's all is to be taken with a grain of salt because it is, you know, AMD. It's, you're not going to be able to get any verified independent reviews until the GPU actually comes out. But at least we'll get an idea of what's going on. I mean, when NVIDIA told us about the 4090, those numbers seem pretty accurate, actually. When the reviews came out, the GPU really definitely was impressive. So let's kind of make this about the 4090 again the 7900 XT and the XTX. That's really what these GPUs are, are fighting in. I mean, there's no budget GPU options here. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor. Priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. And now let's get back to the video. Both AMD and NVIDIA are holding back from releasing things like a 4070, like a 7800 XT, 7700 XT, if you will, because they have so much inventory of last generation. It's not only NVIDIA that has RTX 3000 on store shelves. AMD has a lot of, you know, this guy, 6900 XTs, 6800s, they're everywhere. So this has been dropping in price, like around 700 or less now, which is pretty impressive for a high-end GPU like this, but it's does make the job for the newer releases a little bit harder because look at the stuff that they have to compete with. 6900 XT is not a weak GPU. I don't care how strong a 4090 is, and it is very strong, don't get me wrong, it doesn't invalidate this at all. If you're playing at 1080p or you know, 1440p high refresh rate, something like this will absolutely crush it. You only need a 4090 if you're rocking 4K and you want to do you know lots of ray tracing. Turn on all the bells and whistles. Aside from that, something like like this is still mightily fine which and fits into a lot of people's budget much much better that's going to be where a lot of this is going to come down to so let's see some of the differences that we're expecting first the 7900 xt and the xtx there should be two different models one is just going to have faster memory specifications it's going to be faster in general more cores it's going to perhaps have more memory 20 gigabytes versus 24 for the top end model we're thinking it's going to be confirmed later on this is just purely speculation but that's what we're thinking right now. That's going to be a high-end, you know, 7900 XT X, and then sort of a, a more of a mid-range 7900 XT. That's still, of course, high-end. What is different from the 4090? power consumption. The 4090 at 450 watt TDP is going to be around 100 watts more than what we're expecting the 7900 XT to come in at, at least as the reference model. From the pictures that we've seen of the leaked reference edition, we only see two 8 pins um, at the moment. Of course, we can expect a third-party AIB card such as from PowerColor, which has been teased lately. Perhaps it's going to have triple 8-pin, which is still perhaps preferable right now compared to the NVIDIA 
4090 adapter, which has been giving some issues with melting until NVIDIA figures that out for the 12 volt high powered adapter. I think it's going to be better. We stick with the traditional eight pin, you know, sort of connections, even if it's triple. So it's going to have lower consumption. I mean, AMD has said that they've doubled the performance per watt for RDNA 3. That's going to be one of their biggest selling points versus NVIDIA. Of course, I'm not really expecting the 7900 XTX to completely beat the 4090. I think in traditional rasterization, it's going to come pretty close. I think we're going to be quite surprised. But when you put the entire package together and you include ray tracing and those type of things, I don't really think it's going to completely dominated unless amd really surprises us with some you know ray tracing performance that's out of the out of this world but at 350 watts i think there's only so much they can do so they're going to have to sort of really push the efficiency of it compared to the 4090 while still putting out really impressive numbers that's i think where they're going to take the cake and of course the cherry on top is going to be the pricing um, I wouldn't really think that AMD is going to price these too cheaply. You would think it makes sense for them to undercut NVIDIA by a significant margin, but AMD is interested in having premium products. They want to be the top dog with NVIDIA. They don't want to always be the underdog and just have NVIDIA be the ones that they're sort of having to react to. If you look in the CPU space, they've really kind of dominated Intel the last few years where Zen 4 is priced more expensively now than the Intel 13900K. And it's kind of to their detriment. Intel has definitely been able to sort of claw back some of that dominance. And they've definitely been more popular the 13 generation than Zen 4, I must say. You can look at sales numbers. Even though AMD has dominated the last few years, they are way too expensive for the platform now. They are going to try to do the same thing with the GPU, I imagine. They want to be equal to NVIDIA, or perhaps even beat them, ideally, and not always be playing a game of underdog. That's why I would think that the pricing should be better for the 7900 XT, but I don't expect it to be all that much better. The special XTX, I believe from some things that I've seen, uh, Moore's Law is dead, the YouTuber, he did mention from some of his sources, it's going to be priced pretty close to a 4090. So perhaps I would expect maybe 1299 to 1399 would be my very wild guess, which would still undercut 1599 for the 4090. I'm not sure if they could push it all the way up to 1399 to 1499. That'd be pretty crazy, very expensive for that AMD GPU. Unless the performance beats the 4090 or at least kind of comes close in ray tracing, I'm not sure how they would justify the hardware having that high of a price. Now, I can definitely see 1399 or thereabouts if it performed close enough, but unless it really beats a 4090, I still think Nvidia definitely has the premium spot. Remember, most people still prefer Nvidia. I myself, I like all GPUs. Look behind me. I have an Intel Arc GPU, so that tells you something. I like GPUs. Here's an AMD 6900. I must say, Nvidia dominates every generation, and it's not just with gamers. It's also with content creators, 3D artists. Nvidia has a technical lead that's really, really ahead of every single company. Intel is just a little baby started in the GPU space, but AMD does have the attention of many gamers. Gamers, but in terms of the general scope of content creation, 3D works, I've heard many of my you know viewers say that NVIDIA definitely has a huge advantage. So that's going to be something that, you know, AMD, either they're going to have to just focus on gamers or make their GPUs more widely powerful for every type of user. But for just gaming, they're definitely doing a good job, especially lower resolutions and, you know, rasterization. But can they really price it like NVIDIA? That's going to be something we're going to have to see against the 4090, especially and the upcoming 4080 16 gigabytes. That's going to be where they can really fight this out better. Now, the 7900 XT, the regular version that might be 20 gigabytes of uh, VRAM, the one that's not the highest end model. That one, while this was $999, I don't expect it to be that cheap because NVIDIA did raise their price and you know, uh, AMD could also make some similar arguments with there's a lot of new technology going into this GPU, a lot of more overhead costs. You know, there's a lot of new hardware there. So I would say 
my guess would be 1099 to maybe 1199 tops. I think that would undercut or at least match the 4080 16 gigabyte. And if that GPU can get close to a 4090 and it's priced like a 4080, then AMD could have some pretty good arguments for a lot of gamers. But 1099 would certainly be very interesting. And something to remember about pricing and MSRP pricing too. I was with you guys the last few years. We got really burned on MSRP pricing. It really meant nothing. This guy was $999, which was great, but nobody got it at that price. It was generally $1,400 to $1,700 most of 2021. So we're probably going to see a very similar thing. Even if they announce an MSRP of like, you know, like for example, the 4090, 1599 MSRP, Sure, it's technically true, but it hasn't really been available and most people can't go to a store or even order one and buy it. So that's definitely still a problem. And I think AMD may face a similar issue. Even if this 7900 XT was 1099, you may see the reference one momentarily for that price, but we may then see AIB partners like PowerColor price some hundreds of dollars more. And if the demand proves to really be there and they're sold out, you can definitely expect hundreds and hundreds of dollars more than you really would like to pay, which is going to be a whole other problem and just keep making these GPUs much more expensive than any gamer really wants to pay. Some other potential information we know about the 7900 XT. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but there's going to be some special feature for high resolution, high refresh rate gaming that supposedly makes that better. I mean, something like DLSS on the NVIDIA side, and we know AMD likely will have FSR 3.0 coming up at some point. That's going to be very, very interesting just to give it a super boost in performance. The very high end definitely likes that. So will AMD give us the same type of, you know, secret? Secret sauce, the same type of magic, some type of, you know, advancement in these GPUs. That's what they're saying. High resolution, high refresh rate. There's going to be something very special coming. I'm certainly excited to see what that may be.